Hey everybody, I have another tactical tip for you today. I haven't done a tactical tip in quite some time. Today, we're going to talk about Assault Fire. A very simple and short part of the rule set. And you can see um, up here in the corner up here, which rule set uh, it is from, what rule section from Full ASL and Stir Kit. Uh, first, we're going to talk about what is Assault Fire. Basically, uh, Assault Fire is a mechanic for uh, moving units to get a bonus during the advancing fire phase. But but only it only applies to squads that have some sort of inherent submachine gun or uh, machine gun capability built into their... Um, strength factor in the form of, if you look at this German unit here, an underlined firepower. Now notice I just said squads. Assault fire does not apply to half squads. So if you deploy a unit sometime during the game that has assault fire capability, you lose that capability in the two half squads. Or if you have a half squad as part of the order, order of battle, if the full strength unit multi-man counter has assault fire, the half squad will not have it. Not all units or nationalities will have assault fire capability. Typically, but not always, typically assault fire is limited to elite or first line units. There are exceptions, like I said. Um, and the nationalities that have it are Germans, Axis Minor, Russian, American, and British. Um, select units of those nationalities. Now, the exception to that are Finnish units. Every level of uh, squad quality in the Finnish order of battle, except conscripts, has assault fire. So when you play the Finns, use that assault fire every chance you get. Now, the reason I'm talking about assault fire to begin with is it's a mechanic that I often forget in the heat of battle while you're playing. You're, you're moving, you're defending, you're firing. Sometimes you forget that little underlined uh, firepower strength factor that your unit or units may have. Um, it's not really an advantage if you're playing the defender. Defending units in a scenario typically aren't moving and, and attacking. They're typically staying in place and or retreating slightly, um, in which case they might be able to use that uh, assault fire capability. Now there's a couple caveats to using assault fire. You cannot use it beyond your normal range. In other words, at long range, everything has to be within normal range, and it can't be used if you declare a unit opportunity fire. But a unit that happens to not move for whatever reason, you forget to move them or choose not to move them, um, they can still use Assault Fire during the events and Fire Fates, even if they haven't moved to another Hex. Just if you mark them Opportunity Fire, you cannot use Assault Fire. Now, what are the mechanics of Assault Fire exactly? How do you calculate it? Very easy. So after all modifications, to the firepower factor, whether it's one half for advancing fire phase and or double for being adjacent and or half again for firing concealed units and or being pinned, whatever those modifications are, all the modifications you do after you impose them on your, on your firepower factor, whether it's a lone unit or a fire group, what have you, what you do is add one and then you round up to get their firepower during the advancing fire phase. So let's do an example here of this 548 unit here. Let's say he moved from here into here, and it's now the advancing fire phase. And he wants to fire at one of these units. Uh, his firepower would be two and a half because it's half firepower during the advancing fire phase. And then there's no other modifier to his, to his firepower. So it's two and a half. Then you add one, so it's three and a half, and then you round up to four firepower. So you would fire at one of these units that it's in normal range with four firepower. Now the interesting thing to note about these five four eights, 
which is, in my in my opinion, very critical. Not as critical with a seven firepower, or maybe even a six firepower assault firepower unit. Five firepower. If I had just left him here and fired, what would his firepower be? If he prep fired, it would be four firepower. So units that have fire five firepower and assault fire. You should be moving those every chance you get, especially if you're the attacker, obviously, because the firepower of each unit is essentially going to be, unless you use the incremental fire table, is essentially going to be the same as if you just prep fired them for firepower. Now, if you start doing fire groups, that would change slightly. Um, if these two units prep fired, their firepower would be eight, right? Ten, it goes down to eight on the firepower table. If for some reason they were back here and they moved up into here and then they did advancing fire, the fire group would still be eight. So five firepower units that have assault fire, move them and fire them every chance you get unless for some reason you have to take a prep fire to soften up some unit, what have you. Now it's a little bit different for a 747. Say they're, these guys are firing in the advancing fire phase. Uh, each one would be three and a half. Let's just focus on one. Three and a half, add one, four and a half, round up the five, which goes back down to four. Um, if he just fired uh, during prep fire, it'd be six. So you get less of an advantage in assault fire with a seven firepower versus a five firepower. The five firepower is a is a sweet spot for um, whether you choose to prep fire versus uh, advancing fire. Um, now let's look at a situation where it ha they happen to be like this. This unit here, he moved into this hex and survived any defensive fire and defensive fire, and he's going to advancing fire. In this case, his firepower would be half for moving, two and a half, and then doubled to five for being adjacent and then you'd add one to six and there's no rounding up because you're at a whole number that would be six firepower versus if you'd stayed back here and fired you'd be at four so you can see how you apply all the firepower modifiers and i'm not talking about die roll modifiers i'm talking about um having and doubling of of your firepower depending on the situation adding one and then rounding up and that applies to fire groups too if you're combining units or if you have a unit back here um, do each one individually i recommend doing each one individually and then adding them up if you're doing advancing fire when you're moving and firing make sure you look at and this applies to both squad leader and uh starter kit double check your firepower factor if there's an underline under it Read your sections up here in your row book, very short little sections on how to do it, and take advantage of assault fire, especially if you have these five firepower units. There aren't a lot of them in ASL. That is it for this short tactical tip. I'm sure most people have heard of assault fire. If you're like me, you possibly forget to use it quite often. Try to implement it in your next scenario. And uh, let me know how it goes. We'll see you next time.